In this mini course, I'm going to show you how to get Cloudflare turnstiles set up with your Livewire components. We'll look at a really simple example of this newsletter form where we go ahead and enter an email address and hit subscribe. And we have the Cloudflare widget here, which is validating that we are not a bot. When we hit subscribe here, at the moment we're just dying and dumping. But what's happened behind the scenes here is this has gone over and validated this with Cloudflare's API. We're going to keep this really simple and pull in a package that allows us to do this. We'll look at a couple of customization options and we'll talk about some of the issues we'll get around using this with Livewire and how we get around them. So let's just give the page a refresh just so you can see how this works. And you can see at the moment it's asking me to verify I'm human. So everything that you would expect, but we're going to get this done really, really quickly, and make it work really nicely. Once you're done, you can apply this to any of your other forms. OK, so now that we know what this looks like and how it works, let's jump over and create this form out if you don't have one already. OK, so if you already have a form that you want to protect, feel free to go ahead and skip this onto the next episode. But I'm just going to take some time to set up a really simple example here from scratch just so we can see what we need to do. OK, so I have a fresh project installed with Laravel Breeze. Obviously, I've chosen the Livewire stack here. Let's go ahead and create out a full page component to get this working. So let's go ahead and use Livewire here to make out a newsletter index. Let's imagine we're signing up for a newsletter. Let's go ahead and create that out. Let's go over to our web roots and register this as a full page component. So let's say root get and we'll stick this under the newsletter URL. Let's reference that newsletter index that we've just created and we'll just leave it at that for now. So over in here, let's make sure we use the base layout here from Breeze. So let's say layouts and app. So let's pull that in. And we're just going to copy over, say, the dashboard just to give the same design. So let's move that over to the newsletter component that we have here and just get rid of the app layout that's wrapped by default here and pull everything in. OK, so we should be able to now, if we just modify the title here, head over to newsletter in our app and we've got a nice fresh page. OK, let's just build out something here. It's not going to look great, but that's fine. So let's use the X text input that comes with Laravel Breeze and this will be for the email. So let's go ahead and add in a placeholder here so we can see what we're doing. And we'll hook that up with a model. So let's say wire model and that's going to be the email address. And then down here, let's go ahead and create out a submit button. So let's say primary button. And that's going to be to subscribe or sign up to the newsletter. OK, so now that we've done that, let's just wrap this very quickly in a div so we can add some validation underneath. Let's go over and check this out. OK, so it doesn't look great. Let's just space these things out. So let's do a space Y of six and let's go ahead and make this full width just so we've got something that we can work with. OK, so there we go. We can go ahead and enter an email address in there and hit subscribe and let's just finish that off really quickly okay so over to the component itself let's go and add in a property here that we're going to use for the email address so we could type in that to string as well and that's just going to be an empty value by default and then we want some sort of form submission so let's go ahead and just create our a submit method in here and we want to validate this so we don't have any validation rules just yet but let's go ahead and validate that now and then, then let's just die dump and say subscribe just so we know this has come through. OK, so over to the newsletter index, let's hook this up as a form. So we'll switch that over to a form and we'll say wire submit and we'll go through to that submit method. So now we should be able to enter an email address, have that validated once we add our rules. And when we hit subscribe, we should get a die dump. OK, so we don't have any rules at the moment. Let's just add them in really, really quickly. And we're going to add the rule here as an attribute, but a little bit later, we're going to have to change over the way that we validate when we use this package that works with Cloudflare Turnstile. So let's go ahead and just add a rule here for now as an attribute, and we'll switch that up a little bit later. So let's just say that the email address is required. OK, so when we hit that now, nothing is going to work. But when we enter something in here, sure enough, that goes through and die dumps. Just really quickly add in a validation message in here just so we can reuse this later for our capture. And we're just going to use the error helper here for the email address. And let's just create out a really simple wrapper for any of the errors that we get here. So let's give this a class of text small 
and we'll just say text red 500 just keep it simple okay great so now we have a working form which is good let's go over and start to integrate cloudflare turnstile into our form before we integrate turnstile into our application we're going to need to create a widget over on cloudflare so head over to the turnstile section and let's go through the process of creating a widget together okay so the first and most obvious is going to be the widget name let's just call this turnstile live wire just to keep things simple and the second thing that we want to do here is hook this up to a domain. Now we don't need to do this for the local domain that we're running on. So I'm just gonna hook this up to the productioncodecourse.com domain. The next is the widget mode. So I usually choose managed here. This will decide or Cloudflare will decide whether to show an interactive challenge or not. Non-interactive is just a purely non-interactive challenge, which means users will see the widget, but it will just do it for you. And we also have an invisible widget, which obviously will just be hidden. For the purpose of this, just so we can see the widget in action, we're gonna choose managed or non-interactive. And you can always come back and change these settings later. Okay, so the last thing is, do we want to opt for a pre-clearance cookie? I'm not gonna choose that because this is gonna require us that we actually set a cookie. And I don't wanna to have to go through the trouble of adding this to a cookie banner. Okay, let's go ahead and create this out. And let's just wait for this to finish. Once this is done, we will see our site key and our secret key. So we're going to go ahead and take these, pull these into our application. So let's go over to EMV. Not sure where we're putting them just yet. So let's just add them in here anyway, just so we have them for later. And what this will mean is we can use these with the package that we're going to pull in. So we've got our site key and our secret here ready to go. Okay, so we've created a widget. We can go back and we can edit these and see stats about them as we go through. So we can always change the settings over and access the site key and the secret again if we need to. Okay, let's go ahead and get the package installed that we're going to use to get this working. Next up, we're going to get the Laravel Cloudflare turnstile package pulled in and I'm going to show you how to configure everything. Let's go down to the instructions and we'll grab the command here to install this with Composer and of course come over and pull this into our project. So next up, we're going to go ahead and add the keys that we extracted in the last episode into our config services file. So let's go ahead and grab the entire structure of this and go over to that file. So under config and services and let's pull this down just at the very bottom. So let's pull this in. And now we need to hook the keys that we grabbed earlier, the site key and the secret key up to here. So we've got turnstile site key and turnstile secret key. Since we already moved these over, we can just hook these up. Go to say turnstile site key and assign that and turnstile secret key and we'll assign that. That's that one done. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and pull in the scripts because turnstile requires that we add the script to every page that we want to use this widget on. We've got a couple of options here. Now, since I'm using Laravel Breeze and we have this overall template, so this layouts and app file, so open this up, this will be used within all of the authenticated layouts. What we also have, if you are using Laravel Breeze and come over to resources, views and layouts, is this guest layout as well. That will be for the login and register pages. So I'm just going to add this to app.blade.php, but you can do exactly the same thing over in that guest layout if you want to. Okay, let's come down to the script section and we'll use this turnstile scripts directive to pull them in. And now they're pulled in on every page. And of course you could pull them in manually on individual pages if you didn't want them everywhere. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are pretty much ready to go. Let's go over to the next episode and look at rendering this widget out inside of here. The package that we've pulled in registers a blade component, which we can use and even hook up to a live wire property. So let's go ahead and create out a new container down here, which will house our widget. And let's try to render this out on the page. This is the turnstile widget. So we can go ahead and self close this off. And without doing much else, let's just head over to the browser and see what happens. Okay, so we do actually have an invalid domain here. So let's go ahead and change this over in our settings. And we call this turnstile livewire.test. Okay, let's add that custom domain. Let's update this and we should see this rendered out now. Okay, great. So that's working. Now the next job is to hook up the response that we get back from this widget to a property in our livewire component. Let's go ahead and do that now. 
So we can actually do this with wire model. So let's go ahead and hook up wire model and let's call this turnstile response. Go ahead and create a property for this. And that means that we can validate that within our component as well. OK, so we'll go ahead and open up our newsletter index and let's create a new property up here. And again, we'll call that turn style response. And let's just go ahead and dump this out within the newsletter index blade component, just so we can see that this is working. So let's go ahead and output the turnstile response that we get back. And when we head over and give this a refresh, once that has validated and we get a success, we should see this massive token, which we will then use to send through to the cloud for that API to validate. Now, one thing about the rendering of this component, the nature of Livewire means that when we go ahead and say, enter an email address in here or don't enter an email address and hit subscribe, the entire thing here will get re-rendered. What this means is that this will potentially change with the re-render of our component here. What we want is really this just to be run once. So what we can do here and something that is necessary is to go ahead and use wire ignore. So I'm going to wrap this in just a single div to ignore the turnstile component. We can't apply the ignore directly to this component. But what we're saying now is just ignore this so it doesn't get re-rendered. That's not going to have any effect on when we refresh. It's still going to work. We will still get the token back. But it means now that when we hit subscribe, this section here doesn't get re-rendered and we'll still have the same token. OK, so we've rendered out our widget now. How do we go ahead and validate this token? Let's take a look next. The package that we've installed gives us a custom rule that we can use to take the turnstile response from this property and send it over to Cloudflare to validate. Because this is under a custom rule object, we can't use attributes to do this. So for example, ideally we would do something like this rule. And then in here we would use the Laravel rule class to go ahead and use the turnstile method that's been registered. Now, aside from the fact that we will have a duplicate class name in here for the import, this just isn't going to work. So what we're going to need to do is rethink how we validate this particular form now that we've got the turnstile response. And I'm actually going to go ahead and set that while we're here to an empty string. OK, so an alternative way and the old style way to register rules within a live wire class is to define out a rules method. From here, we can just go ahead and return an array with any of the rules that we want for the properties that we have inside of here. So for the email, let's go ahead and set this up a little bit more properly now and say required an email. And now we can go ahead and validate the turnstile response once this gets submitted. So to do this, let's say that this is required, but then we're also going to use the Laravel rule object. So let's pull this in from illuminate validation. We can even at this point, since we're not using the live wire rule, get rid of that as well. And we could just go ahead and import this properly at the top like so and pull that in. And we just have a really simple method already registered via this package called turnstile. So we're saying that the turnstile response is required and this rule will go ahead and validate this with the Cloudflare API. OK, let's go ahead and try this out. And we'll also try to manually make this wrong so it doesn't work. OK, so I'm going to go over and I'm going to enter my email address. It's asked us to verify that we're human here. So we're going to go ahead and click this. Once we get a success on that, that should add that response to that property. And when we hit subscribe, that should go ahead and validate that. There's going to be a slight delay because it's going to be hitting the Cloudflare API. But we now know that this works. Let's go ahead and try and fail this. So to do this, we can come over to the template here and we can get rid of wire model and we could set our own value to this. So over in newsletter index, let's set the response we get back to ABC, which is clearly not a right token. OK, if we come over and refresh this, let's go and try this out. So let's render that out and enter our email address, hit subscribe and nothing happens. So the rule has now failed. Let's output the validation under our newsletter index. So just below this, let's go ahead and use the same error helper here for the turnstile response. And actually, let's just go ahead and copy and paste all of this just to save a bit of time. So let's put that in there and we'll do this for the turnstile response and dump the message out. 
Okay, let's just take a look at what the message gives us. And you can see here the response parameter is invalid or has expired. We're going to be customizing that soon. Okay, so let's bring back the wire model hookup into here for that turnstile response. And let's go back over to our index and get rid of ABC. So now we're successfully validating this with Cloudflare. And that means that if this is incomplete or it just doesn't work, we're not going to be allowed through. Okay, let's go ahead and look at doing a little bit of customization. So to customize the widget itself, this has a bunch of data properties that we can pass down to it. Let's just look at two here. The first one is going to be the data action. This allows Cloudflare to categorize what you're doing. So in our case, we're signing up for a newsletter. If you were to apply this to your login or register forms, you could set these as login and register. And that will just allow you under the Cloudflare analytics to see what has a bigger failure rate or how many requests are being sent. For us, let's just go ahead and name this newsletter. And that nicely categorizes what we're doing with this widget. The next one is going to be the theme. Our theme is light, so I'm just going to go ahead and change this over to a light theme. And when we come over and give that a refresh, you can see that that has changed. So all of these options are in the documentation for this package. So go ahead and check them out if you need to do anything else. The next thing we want to customize is the error that we get back. So ideally, what we don't want to do is show any kind of response back from Cloudflare. So we saw that in the last episode. Let's go ahead and customize the validation messages that we get back here. And again, because we're not using attributes and we can't here with this custom rule class, we're going to have to go ahead and add in a method into our component here called messages. So we can do this for the email. I'm not going to bother doing that. Let's specifically do this for the turnstile response. Now, the question is, what error message are we trying to handle? As an example, if we were doing this for the email address and the required field, we would do email.required and then we would say something like, please enter an email address. Now, we're not going to do that. We want to do that for the turnstile response. If we take a look at this, the actual re uh, response that we get back is going to be the turnstile rule just here and the fully qualified class name. So I'm just going to say something like invalid turnstile response. You can obviously change that to say it failed the capture or whatever you wanted to say. So this class here is this just here, and that allows us to map up the response we get back from this rule and customize the error message here. So let's go ahead and try this out. And we can do the same thing for required as well if we wanted to, in which case you would do turnstile response dot required. And that would work in exactly the same way as a normal rule. So in here, we would just put anything and I'll let you decide. OK, let's go ahead and just change this around again so we don't have a wire model. And let's go back over to our newsletter to index and let's set this to ABC. And we should see our custom rule invalid turnstile response come through. So let's go over, give this a refresh. We'll try and submit this off and hopefully we get a custom rule. Let's hit subscribe and there we go. Invalid turnstile response. I'll let you go ahead and customize that to say whatever you want. For now, though, let's just bring back the wire model here and let's go over and just make sure we get rid of this. And there we go. A couple of customization options, both within our validation messages and also within the widget itself.